Mr. President, I, I take this time to share with my colleagues the tragic events that unfolded these past few weeks in the Ukraine. Ukraine is an incredibly important country. The recent events are tragic, the result of a corrupt government and loss of life. I remember the Orange Revolution that took place in, in Ukraine uh, in, starting in November 2004, ending in January 2005. Hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians took to that protest to protest a corrupt election. They did it in a peaceful way. They not only got the attention of the people of Ukraine, but the attention of the world. As a result of that peaceful revolution, the government uh, stood for new elections, free and fair elections. Democratic leadership was elected. And all of us thought the future for Ukraine was very, very positive. So, President, I was in uh, Kiev not long after that Orange Revolution, had a chance to talk to the people who were involved, talk to the new leaders. And I saw that sense of hope that Ukraine at long last would be an independent country without the domination of any other country. And the proud people would have a country that would respect their rights, that would transition into full membership in Europe and provide the greatest hope for the future generations. They started moving in that direction. And as you know, there were agreements with Europe for integration. They have been involved in military operations in close conjunction with NATO. And Ukraine was and is an important partner for the United States and for Europe. Then Viktor Yanukovych uh, came into power for the second time. Mr. Yankovich took the country in a different direction. He was a corrupt leader and had a close involvement with Russia. Today, there's some hope. The parliament has brought in a new interim government. Presidential elections are now scheduled for May 25th. But there are certain matters that are still very much up in doubt. In the Crimea, which is a part of the Ukraine, which has a large Russian population, there's unclear as to what is happening there. Pro-Russian uh, sympathizers have taken over government buildings. It's not clear Russia's involvement. And it's critically important that the international community uh, have access to what's happening in the Crimea and then make it clear that Russia must allow the Ukraine to control its own destiny. It is time for the international community to mobilize its resources to assist Ukraine's transition to a democratic, secure, and prosperous country. The people of Ukraine have had an incredibly difficult history. And over the last century, have been subjected to two world wars, 70 years of Soviet domination, including Stalin's genocide, famine, our assistance at this time will be a concrete manifestation that we do indeed stand by the people of Ukraine as they manifest their historic choice for freedom and democracy. Moreover, we need to help Ukraine succeed to realize the vision of a Europe whole, free and at peace. That is our desire. That's the desire of the people of Ukraine. They're moving right now on the right path. They critically need our help and the international community's help to make sure that Russia does not try to dominate this country, that its desires to become part of Europe are realized, that free and fair elections can take place, and the rights of their people can be respected by their government. Yesterday, I heard from Swiss President and OSCE Chair in Office, President Bolkholder, uh, and welcomed his engagement and the important role the OSCE can play in the Ukraine. Mr. President, uh, as you know, as a member of the Commission, I have the honor of chairing the Helsinki Commission. And that's our implementing arm to the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Foreign Minister from one of the member states usually acts as our chair in office. And this year, 
Mr. Burkhalter is not only the foreign minister of Switzerland, he's also the president of Switzerland. And he is the person who's responsible for the direction of that organization. We had a hearing with him, and, the, and Ukraine took a good part of our discussions. The, the guiding principles of the OSCE is that if you're going to have a prosperous country, if you're going to have a secure country, you have to have a country that respects the rights of its citizens. Respecting the rights of their citizens means that they are entitled to good governance. They're entitled to a country that does not depend upon corruption in order to finance its way of life. That's the principles of the OSCE. A country with good governance, respect for human rights, that takes on corruption, is a country where there'll be economic prosperity and a country in which we'll enjoy security. And that has been our chief function to try to help other countries. The meeting yesterday underscored the importance OSCE can play in the future of Ukraine. And we hope that they will utilize those resources so that Ukraine can come out of this crisis as a strong, democratic, independent country. Now, there's got to be accountability here. There's got to be accountability for those who are responsible for the deaths in Kiev. I mention that because, yes, there's a moral reason for that. Those who committed atrocities should be held accountable. That's just a matter of basic rights. But there's also the situation when you don't bring closure here, it offers little hope that these circumstances won't be repeated in the future. If future government leaders believe that they can do whatever they want to, and there'll be no consequences to their actions, they're more likely to do the irresponsible actions that we saw in Ukraine. So yes, it's important that we restore a democratic government in Ukraine. It's important that that government be independent and able to become full members of Europe. It's important that that government respect the human rights of its citizens, but it's also important that they hold those responsible for these atrocities accountable for their actions. The Obama administration took some action this past week. Uh, they did deny visas to certain members that were responsible for the government of Ukraine's, and they did freeze banking accounts of those who were involved in the corrupt practices in the Ukraine. That was a good first step and I applaud their actions. Let me just uh, remind my colleagues that we passed the Sergei Minitsky Rule of Law Accountability Act as part of the Russia PNTR legislation. I was proud to be the sponsor of the Sergei Minitsky Rule of Law Accountability Act. What that does, it says, and it was amended to apply only to Russia, that those that are involved in gross violations of internationally recognized human rights will be denied the privilege of being able to come to America to get a visa, and that we will deny them the opportunity to use our banking system. Why is that important? Because we found that those corrupt officials want to keep their properties outside of their host country. They want to visit America. They want to use our banking system. They want their corrupt ways to be in dollars, not in rubles. So denying them that opportunity is an effective remedy for making sure they can't profit from all of their corruption. That legislation was limited to Russia, not by our design. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senate Finance Committee approved the Sergei Minitsky Rule of Law Accountability Act as a global act, applying beyond Russia. Now, Sergei Minitsky was a young lawyer who uh, discovered corruption in Russia. He did what he should do, told the authorities about it. As a result, he was arrested, tortured, and killed because he did the right thing. So we took action to make sure that those responsible could not benefit from that corruption. That was the Sergei Minitsky bill. We felt, though, that it should be a tool available universally. Well, we had a compromise on that. It was limited to Russia. It's time to change that. Along with Senator McCain, I've introduced the Global Human Rights Accountability Act, S-1933. 
It has several bipartisan sponsors. It would apply globally. So yes, it would apply to the Ukraine. It would have congressional sanctions to the use of the tools of denying visa applications and our banking privileges to those who are responsible for these atrocities. I believe our colleagues understand how important that is for us to do. It's interesting that today the State Department issued its human rights practices for 2013. This is a required report that we request that gives the status of human rights records throughout the world, talking about problems. Now, I'm sure my colleagues recognize that human rights problems are not limited to solely Russia or Ukraine, from Bahrain to China to Bangladesh, from Belarus to Ethiopia to Venezuela, from Sudan to South Sudan, Syria. The list goes on and on and on. The report lists all the gross violations of human rights that have occurred. Unfortunately, the list is too long. I could name another dozen countries that are spelled out in this report. Human rights are universal, and it's our responsibility to act and show international leadership. It takes time to pass good laws as it should, which is why we must act with urgency now. The measures contemplated in my legislation have great corrective power, but they are strongest when deployed in a timely manner, preferably before the outbreak of violence. The year 2013 was a particularly challenging year for human rights, and today we cannot afford to be silent. The Global Human Rights Accountability Act serves as an encouragement for champions of democracy, promoters of civil rights, and advocates of free speech across the globe. As the great human rights defender Nelson Mandela once said, there are times when a leader must move ahead of the flock, go off in a new direction, confident that he is leading his people the right way. In this great body, the United States Senate, we have a responsibility to lead the way in accountability for human rights. Mr. President, we've done that in the past. We have shown through our own example, and we've shown through our interest in all corners of the world that this country will stand up for the protection of basic human rights for all the people. We now have a chance to act by the passage of the Global Magnitsky Law.